Hello, hello, hello. Welcome um, everyone to the 2021 Career Exploration Camp presented by Body Armor. Look at Kenny Stivers showing up right on time. That's my guy. Um, my name is Patrick Stack. I uh, have the good fortune of being the executive director and one of the co-founders of Sports Biz Cares and I'm super excited to welcome you all today. From across the country, I'm looking at the numbers. We're 168 deep. Um, hopefully, more more coming on. So, um, want to do a bit of table setting uh, before we jump into a presentation that's going to be led by Jed Collins and Kenny Stivers from Copper Banking. Uh, and and I've asked uh, our entire SBC team to join us today. So, uh, a couple things before we jump into that presentation. You've, you've got some features here that I want to make sure that we learn how to use. The thing is, it looks like a smiley face. It's a reaction. You can press that thing and you can keep on pressing that thing when you see something that you like. Okay. So that, that's one thing. And, and along those lines, the reason I wanted to have our team up here today uh, is because none of this happens without these people. So uh, we'll start with uh, the person that does the most work for sports biz carriers, and that's Lana Trusi. So can we get a couple, uh, let's, let, let's get that, um, that, that reaction thing going for Lana here. Let's go here. Uh, you, Murray. So for those of you that haven't already watched your college prep combos, you're going to see Christian a lot. He's recorded a significant amount of content that you guys can consume to get you ready for college. Let's get some love for Christian Murray. D. Wilson uh, is going to be handling our social channels. Let's get some love for, for D. Wilson. Let's go. Let's get these reactions going. Uh, and then Payne Yoder as well. So you all are here to learn from Jed, to learn from Kenny. You're here to learn from industry professionals as part of these Pathway Roundtables. We've got 150 of them from 110 organizations. Payne has been leading that charge, talking to them, recruiting them, finalizing things. So let's get some love for Payne too. Look at that. Look at all those reactions, Lana. That's gotta be some kind of record. I know, this is more than I can do. Well, we're really excited to have everyone here. Um, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm gonna roll through a bit of a presentation. So I'm gonna take over the screen here, but um, just to our, our SBC team, no way we could do this without you all. So thank you so much. Um, we've put in a lot of hours to put on this event for you all, um, and this is our payoff. So hopefully you, hopefully you guys enjoy our program, you take advantage of the program. But once again, to, to Lana, to Christian, to Payne and Dee, each of which was a, was a former student of mine at Johnson Wales, could not be more proud of you guys to see you kind of come from college student to, to professional and now helping back the next generation. So thank you so much. Cool. All right, I'm gonna share my screen and we're gonna dive in because we are gonna stay on track. Oh no, we've got issues. Hold on one second. We've got a new, we got new computer issues. Okay, better? Can someone make a noise if you're able to see my screen? We got you. Awesome, that was, that was close. Okay. So welcome to the Career Exploration Camp. As we jump in, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, I love using GIFs in presentations. I do that for a variety of reasons. One, it makes me laugh. Two, hopefully it makes you laugh. And three, hopefully it disrupts um, and, and makes fun what, what for many people can kind of be a, a challenging presentation to listen to someone else talk. So we're going to make some fun out of that. As I mentioned in the upfront, the best way to start a conversation is to say thank you. So I would encourage you all to use that as you're having conversations with your industry professionals today. But we wanted to say thank you to the many people that I just alluded to earlier. Um, and I wanted to start off with a quote, right? So as you guys start thinking about not only your experience at this program, but your experience as you go forward in your academic and professional careers, Saying thank you costs nothing, but gives everything. So once again, if I can make a suggestion as you start to meet people, whether it's at this event or in person, walk up and say, thank you for coming. Thank you for giving your time. Thank you for spending time to help me out. Here are the amazing people that I want to say thank you to earlier. Uh, unavailable in the previous main stage, but intimately a part of our organization, Kenya Jones, who's now working with the Atlanta Hawks, and Austin Everingham, who is in grad school. And we'll talk about that at a later date. Grad school is a lot of fun. And then also, uh, each of you are here 
at no cost, at zero dollars, thanks to the generosity of 331 different donors. So their money provides the opportunity for us to use this platform, helps pay for all of our employees to put on these programs. In addition to that, we rely on a system of volunteers and all these individuals down here are members of our, either our advisory council or a board of directors and they volunteer their time to put these events together, volunteer their networks to help put these amazing programs together and then volunteer their networks to help raise funds. So we could not do it without these amazing individuals. We also have sponsors. So thank you to all of our proud SBC sponsors. So these organizations are committed to our mission, which is increasing social mobility while expanding diversity in the sports industry. They lend their time and talent and treasure. So they're, they're providing funds and also lending their um, organizations representatives to be a part of these programs. So thank you to these sponsors. Once again, without them, we cannot provide this program to you guys at no cost. Now that stuff's out of the way, but thank you stuff is important, but let's move on. Let's talk about you all. These folks look they're, like they're having fun, right? They're clapping, they're having a good old time, but, but where are they? They're seated on the bench. These people look like they're having a lot of fun, right? They're in the game. That's where you wanna be, in the game. So as you start to think about your experience throughout the entirety of the Career Exploration Camp, don't be on the bench, I want you to be in the game, right? And, and the spirit of the Career Exploration Camp, right, we wanna get you in coach. We wanna get you guys ready to play. The spirit of the ex Exploration Camp is that, it's exploration. So I thought this quote was really appropriate. Exploration is curiosity put into action. So if you don't really know what it means to explore at this camp, hopefully you know what it means is, is to be curious at this camp, right? And curiosity starts with putting yourself in there, sitting down with pathway roundtable discussions, asking questions, listening and following up. So when you think about what we want out of you for this program, we want you to be curious. You are one of 955 students from 48 states that registered to attend this. So give yourself a bit of a round of applause on that. That is a number significantly more than what we had had last year. And it's really quite a mind boggling um, program for us as you start to think about how we how we started in 2019 with one in-person program in Charlotte, North Carolina. So you're part of a really big, amazing group of people. You're also getting access to 150 different professionals as well from 110 organizations across 19 different pathways. So that means you're in good company. So I wanted to leave you with this quote as well as we start to think about your involvement in this organization and this event. If you hang out with the chickens, you're going to cluck. If you hang out with the eagles, you're going to fly. You are amongst good people. You are amongst eagles. Take advantage of this opportunity. Take advantage of this opportunity to fly. You are who you hang out with. Is that why there's no mascots, chickens? Probably. Well, there's Gamecocks. There you go. There you go. So moving on kind of to the uh, the flow for today's uh, today and, and the entirety of the camp. Uh, for best results, please follow instructions. That was etched in my head from my dad, right, whenever I was screw screwing something up. So would really ask that you guys pay attention to these instructions for a variety of reasons. Most most importantly is that in doing so, this is going to ensure that both you has a po have a positive experience, but everyone here has a positive experience. And that goes for students and also professionals. So 955 people, all on a virtual platform, across nine, 19 different pathways, 150 professionals. Things are gonna get a little crazy and chaotic, all right? You might not know where to go as well as you start to navigate all these different roundtable discussions. So we're gonna create waves. So our first session, which is gonna be Jed and Kenny, we're gonna get going here in a second. That's an all team meeting. So everyone is invited to that. We're in this main stage. We're engaging the way that we are now. That's awesome. We're gonna break at one o'clock. And at one o'clock, you're gonna go from a pathway round table session for 30 minutes from one to 1.30, and then a second one from 1.30 to two. And we're gonna break or dismiss in waves. So if you think about some of your experiences, maybe in elementary school, you dismiss people at different times. We're gonna do the same thing. So the first wave will be people that have completed their ascend challenges are built around the orientation. They've identified these are the pathways that interest me and here's where I'm going and when I'm going. That's wave one and we'll dismiss you in that manner. Wave two is you're here, maybe you forgot to complete the ascend orientation, maybe you didn't know where to find it, whatever that looks like. We still want you to be part of the pathway round tables. So we've grouped you by first name and first part of your first name. And then we'll be providing you instructions on where you go from there. And then wave three will be the non-students that are joining us. So basically there's a cap on each of our tables. So in doing this, we're gonna ensure that the people know where they're going, they're going to the appropriate opportunity, and then 
once again, everyone's able to explore. So we're gonna go off and wave. So please do follow those instructions as we break at 1 p.m. As a reminder, these are the 19 different pathways. Mixed in here is also our help desk, which you can visit at any time throughout the program. It's either table one, table two, or table three. A member of our SBC team will be there to help answer any questions that you have. So wave two, uh, if, if you do not know where you're supposed to go, this is where you should be paying attention. Your first name is A through C. You go to one of those opportunities at one and 130. If your name is D through I, those are your options and, all, and so on and so forth. We'll make sure we drop this graphic into the chat. And once again, if you have any questions, you can reach out to people, but this is a way to help structure um, us going towards where we need to go, making sure we're being efficient with everyone's time. If you remember that wave three, which is that you're non-student, once again, we want you to join. We want you to be a part of this entire program, but we would ask that you watch from the sidelines. So please try not to ask questions. Um, please not to put too much in the chat. You're there to really kind of hopefully uh, see what we're teaching our students and see the experience that's happening, but we want those experience, those students to be able to have the opportunity to experience this themselves. As a reminder, tomorrow is the first of two different college advising fairs that we're gonna have. You'll be getting an email from us again with the specific registration link. It's a different registration link, but this allows you the opportunity to get some really great college advice from a professional. Her name is Tini and then do virtual college visits to these 13 different universities after the fact. Another reminder, if you're here, you love sports. If you love sports, you probably love to compete. Well, we've created an opportunity for you guys to compete and win prizes. And that is the Ascend platform. So if you've completed the orientation, you know all about this, but there are additional assignments on there you can complete, you win points, and you're subject to many rewards and prizes. A lot of these programs are built around helping you navigate the college decisions. So that's where our, our friend Christian has been so intimately involved. So log into Ascend, consume this content, complete the challenge challenges, get yourself ready for college, and you can win points. And then if you don't wanna get emails from us, you're sick of getting emails from us, or don't wanna read them, follow us on social. We'll be using that as a channel to communicate all we've got going on in real time. It's at Sports Biz Camps on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and of course, we'll be sending you emails. All right, now for the fun part, tip off. We're gonna jump into our program. We're gonna talk about money, okay? And I'm really excited to introduce uh, the folks that are gonna be talking about money. In, in advance of that, I wanna put this question out there and I think Jed is gonna be able to address this as part of his presentation. But the question is, how do you become rich? So think about that for a second. And think about that as I introduce the following folks. So Jed Collins, who, who uh, will be introduced here shortly from, from Kenny with Copper Banking, is gonna be joining us for a Be A Money, Money Pro conversation. Before I kick it to Kenny to kind of take it from here, I'd be remiss if I didn't share some really great photos of Kenny and Jed during their football days. So uh, Kenny played college football at San Diego, Jed played college football at Washington State, and then played for a number of NFL teams so you do a quick Google search. I couldn't find any pictures of Kenny in uniform necessarily, but I found a picture of him in college, which is great. we got a great great picture here, Jed giving someone the Heisman. Well done. Um, and, and as I think about passing the baton to Kenny to introduce this conversation, you see a picture like this, Jed getting everyone fired up. This is, this is how I feel getting everyone fired up, right? I'm not sure what he's screaming or saying. Jed, any insights there? Uh, my pregame was, it's about that time, it's about that time, time to play some football. That's uh, that's a direct quote. <laughs> well, it's Much about louder. that time. It's about, it's that, about time. that time. <laughs> it's about that time for, for Kenny to take it from here, introduce Copper Banking, our, our proud partner of this program, and then, and then Judd Collins. So thank you all very much. Well, that, uh, that was perfect uh, because I think those pictures were probably perfectly representative of the level of my career versus what, what Jed's was. And uh, uh, a very cool opportunity. Ours was, you guys, some of you may know this quote, but our pregame was, who's got a better than us? Nobody. Uh, that was Jim, Jim Harbaugh, our head coach in college, uh, started that at San Diego. I just want everybody to know that that wasn't a, a 49er thing. It wasn't a Michigan thing, San Diego thing. Um, 
I'm excited to be here. Uh, I'm, I'm fired up that, that we get to be here with you guys and uh, share some of uh, what I consider to be the, the failures and mistakes of our past uh, and what I have now translated uh, our organizations into what, what the cheat codes to life are. How do we give you guys the cheat codes to life to be better set up uh, for your futures? I remember playing video games way back, Super Nintendo, and uh, there, there was this cheat code, uh, up, down, left, right, A, B, select, start, and it unlocked the world as far as what I understood uh, in, in the gaming world back then. And that is the same type of feeling, the same type of mentality that I want to be able to impart on on you guys uh, at the age that you are, because I feel like there are too many incredible opportunities in the world that just need to be exposed, just need to be given to you to unlock uh, the, the success for your futures. So uh, I couldn't be more excited to, to be sharing the stage with Jed. Uh, a lot of what he is going to be going through aligns perfectly with the tool that, that we are going to be providing. Uh, and we've got some really cool rewards and, and things that we're going to be giving away, uh, some cold, car, cold hard cash right into to some accounts for you guys, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. So uh, I'll pass it to the hype man uh, and the guy with a much better career than I ever had. <laughs> so uh, my man, Jed Collins, take it. Kenny, appreciate it. And uh, yes, we will definitely be talking about how we are connecting and collaborating uh, Patrick, Christian, Jeff, team, uh, Lana, just opportunity here to deliver a message, to be a voice, um, and really to just come out and talk about a passion. Um, I want to be able to do a few things this morning as, or some of you are probably biting into lunch, um, is introduce myself as well as kind of some of the concepts. As you heard, I got to chase the dream, play professional football for seven seasons. And while many of you are saying, wow, that's a tremendous success, you will see in every successful journey uh, a hero's journey, somebody who was continually knocked down, knocked out, and continued to go. I was cut 12 times, 12 times called and told my dream was over in the National Football League. And it was only a, about my 12th or 13th time that I eventually became the number one fullback in the NFL and the best at my position in the world. But it was with the learning aspect of each and every one of those decisions. And so as I challenge myself, I challenge you today. A, somebody, a team in my instance, somebody calls you, gives you correction, gives you feedback, or just simply tells you no. This is the moment that success is really born. Everybody wants to see the bright lights, sees the championship, but it is the person that is able to take those losses. Um, as I am down at my parents' house visiting, uh, as we finally get to travel, I look out at uh, the childhood court in the basketball or basketball court in my backyard that me and my brothers played on. And people ask me, okay, getting cut 12 times in the NFL, how did you deal with that? Well, I look at this court in my backyard and I remember a game my father created called King for a Day. King for a day was one-on-one -on -one basketball with me and my two older brothers. And the victor got to boss the other brothers around. And I remember the thousand times we played basketball, played King for a day. I, I won twice. Very vividly, I won twice King for a day. That means I lost 998 times. And it was in this humbling, it was in this process, in these moments that I began to realize there is a, going to be a tremendous amount of things I can't control and things I cannot control. And it was heading out onto that basketball court that I began to look within myself and say, as an athlete, as a student, as a professional, as now a husband, as a father, as you all begin your journeys, identifying what you can and can't control is a pivotal, pivotal piece. Mow your grass. That motto was shared throughout many of the NFL locker rooms and it was a message from our coaches that told us, you don't always control the outcome. We like to think we do, but control what you can control. As I transition and start to look at money, mow your grass, control the controllables is the essence of building a financial plan. But looking at what you can control in your daily lives, I would look at three things. I like to say control your APE, A-P-E, your attitude, your preparation, 
and your effort. And that last one, that effort, that's one that, man, that can overcome so, so much. But your attitude, what is that voice in your head saying? Your preparation, how are you showing up? Did you do your work? Did you stumble into this? Do you know what's happening? Do you know who he's talking or who is speaking to? And then that effort is something that every coach, every teacher, every boss, every employee, every colleague of yours is going to be measuring and looking at. I asked you to drop some questions in the chat. I have PowerPoints. Kenny has PowerPoints. We're going to throw some slides up as we progress, but I want to maintain this as conversational as possible. We have about 40 minutes together this morning, as well as your entire experience with uh, Sports Biz this couple of days. But what we are all focused on is what you want to know. How are you going to walk away with skills? How are you going to walk away with knowledge? How are you going to walk away with action items to go and do and take? Um, and so as we do that, I look at finances, being financially literate. One of Money Vehicle's missions is to eliminate financial illiteracy really being able to empower you with the skills. Kenny was talking about the cheat codes. We are focused on just the the game, the, the starting pieces, how the game opens, where and how we're going to begin that. The three biggest money stresses are around how am I managing my cash? What is my debt situation? And then ultimately, am I going to achieve freedom? And you'll notice even in those designations, we've changed some of the stories, some of the words. I don't use the B word, budget, don't like it. People have a negative connotation to it. I understand it, but I like cash management. When I say cash management, you instinctually say, I'm now in control, I'm telling my cash what to do. You look at retirement, I think that's a word that needs to be retired because today there are 34 year olds living on a smaller time frame or a smaller uh, cost flow in, in their monthly basis who are financially free. There are 65 year olds who are nowhere near freedom. So when we look at the word retirement, let's push that out and let's look at financial freedom as our long term goal, not our goal for today. Our goal for today is going to be a little bit shorter, a little bit more obtainable. But those are going to be kind of our three directions. How am I going to manage my cash? How am I going to manage my debt? How am I going to manage freedom? I am in control. Uh, so as we begin, I love the 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 call out of hey drop some questions let's start just right there how much debt is too much debt so i love this question because sydney it immediately begins to challenge the adage that i grew up with my father's financial plan was get a good job and avoid all debt dave ramsey is a proponent avoid all debt this question alludes to the idea that you see there is some positives, there is some necessary, there is some need around debt. And so as we begin to look at good debt versus bad debt, there are four questions. If any of you have pen and paper, I always recommend having some close. I have about two or three different journals. This one's actually called a bullet journal. Very cool thought theory book, um, if you guys want to check that out. But Sydney, as you look at managing your debt. You're going to ask yourself these four questions. The first one is, when I take on debt, what is my purpose? What is my purpose around this debt? You're talking specifically here about student loans. Well, my purpose is to go get an education. That is the purpose. That is the why that I'm going to be taking out these loans. When I look at, say, a credit card, when I look at buying a trip, is that good debt? Well, that's not debt with a purpose, a why that is eventually going to bring in more money. Student loans, getting a degree, investing in yourself doesn't bring in more money immediately. But if you look at the statistics, the societal impact and change education and employment will have, then you can see long term how it brings in money. So that is my first question. As you value how much is too much? Begin with why. Why am I taking this on? That second question is going to be the cost. And this is where we start to filter through how much is too much. That cost is not going to only be what interest rate you're paying. I have a federal student loan at three or four percent. I have a private student loan at eight or nine percent. I have a credit card. 
I don't know how many of you know the average interest rate of credit cards at 20%. So looking at that, when I ask my second question, what is the cost? Interest rate is very, very pivotal to this, but it's also the opportunity cost. Sydney, can you give me a, your definition or an understanding of what that term opportunity cost means? Opportunity cost, it's like the next best thing you could get um, when making a decision, right? I love it. Yeah, that's a, that's a perfect uh, explanation. The next best thing. Some would say, what is the first thing you're giving up? So when you look at your opportunities, your decisions, should I take out this amount of debt? I can take out $100,000 of student loans and go to Vanderbilt, very expensive private institution. Or I can take out $20,000 and go to one of my state schools. I can take out $5,000 and go to a community college for two years and then transfer somewhere else. So when you look at the opportunity costs of how much, you have to be able to begin that decision of what am I taking on and what is going to be the reward of it? I know why, that was my first question, is why I'm doing this long-term, but is there enough of a difference to take on that for the payoff, for the cost? Do I see the reward of going to the more expensive school, taking on the bigger debt, versus going to a good school and less debt. Those are the opportunity cost decisions that I'm going to have to make. After the fact comes in that interest rate of what you will be charged for that decision, but that first decision has to be around what am I willing to take on and what am I willing to give up? And if I am looking at the more expensive private, I think it will lead to a better job and a better career, because that is the intention of college is to get you into a career, then it is worth that more expensive or more debt. The third question you're gonna ask around debt, my why, my cost, my tax advantage. Now, there's a famous saying in financial planning, never let the tax tail wag the dog. You don't wanna make any decisions because of tax advantages. Though you look at student loans, you are going to get a tax advantage for paying interest on student loans. So that is a perk, that is a plus. That is factored into the decision, that is not the decision. For many reasons, because there are some income limits, there's a, a, a limit of how much you get to deduct, and it is not just dollar for dollar. So as I look at it, I get to quantify, I have paid $700, I've paid $2,000 of interest on my student loans, I get to remove that from any taxable income. That's a big advantage. The last and certainly not least, I know my why, I know my cost, I know my tax impact is going to be your capacity. And this word capacity is very different than tolerance. We can talk about, and one of the questions I'll address here in a moment is around stocks, around investing. Can I look at risk tolerance and risk capacity, the same with investing as I do with debt. When I look at this fourth consideration of capacity, it is not an emotional decision. My risk tolerance is an emotional decision. It is what I can stomach. I look at, uh, let's say the stock market, the stock market drops 30%. Can I tolerate that? Am I gonna be sick to my stomach? No. Well, then can I withstand that? That is my capacity. When I look at how much debt is too much debt, that fourth consideration has to be driven by what is your cash capacity? Can I manage these? We know that you may not be paying back student loans during school. It will come in six months or a year after your schooling. But as I look forward, will that number significantly impact my plan to the point I cannot handle it, I cannot withstand it. So the fourth part of that is how much debt is too much? When you look at the career you want to have, the average pay that it is going to have, one of the things I'm gonna arm you with here in a few minutes is a cash management tool to break these decisions up. But as you look at that, is that number going to be more than you can 
withstand more than you are capable of paying on a monthly basis. So that is how, and Sydney, I would love response questions. Did that identify a good sequence of how to work through that question? Yeah, I really did. Um, I really thought how you said, um, like, is it going to be financially, uh, like, will you be financially capable of withstanding that later um, down the road when you have to pay it and when you have a salary? And uh, I just think it's really good uh, things to think about, especially uh, with the career I want to go to. It's going to require extra schooling. And so I'm going to have to pay student loans most likely. Absolutely. But looking that as an investment in yourself, in your future, and how it is going to impact the trajectory of everything going forward. Sydney, I applaud you. I applaud the question. Make sure you look at those four questions. What is my purpose? How or why is this going to make my career better and more money in the future? Number two, what is the cost, both interest rate and opportunity? What is my three tax advantage? And then four, from a cash flow perspective, how do I do that? So great question from Matthew Hall. How do you graduate college with limited debt? This is why money vehicle has had to go away from the, the adage of avoid debt at all costs. 70%, $1 trillion of debt today is student loans. That is the new epidemic. That is the new concern from a financial crisis. We, for the last 30 years, have continued to look at credit card debt and see the struggles of it. People are being educated. Part of the money vehicle, one of our chapters, is avoiding that credit card debt. But when you look at getting your first car, getting your first home, getting college education, getting a credit card, you need to manage these debts. So how do you leave school with as little debt as possible? Matthew, I applaud this question. You first have to look at what type of student loan you've taken out. There are certain, they, and again, I am not a student loan expert, and that is not the point of this because we're going to change topics here in a moment. But as you look at the types, is it a federal loan or is it a private loan? As you look at who is signing, is it Matthew as the student in his own name? Do I have a co-signer with my parent? Then I look at the interest rates. What is the percentage? Is it fixed or is it flexible? Uh, excuse me, adjustable. And as you start to measure these things out, you start to identify what type of loan do I have? We like to say, absolutely, if you feel comfortable, you have the capacity to start to pay down some of your student loans while in school, Try that option, but you have to make sure there are no fees. So as I look at student loans, you have just taken a debt out from me to go to college. I want my money. That's why I made this agreement. You are paying me interest for this money you are borrowing. If you pay me back early, I make less money and there are certain loan types that are not gonna be comfortable with that. So I need to identify very directly which loan type do I have. Now, as I move over, do I want to just make sure I'm paying off interest so there's no interest accruing? Again, federal student loans are not going to start accruing interest until after you graduate for the most part. But do I want to start paying those down as I work through it? Do I want to pay down the principal? So interest is what I'm being charged. Principal is the amount of money I actually borrowed. Which one do I want to start attacking? And I have to look at the term. So how long? We look at mortgages and you look at student loans in the same lens. If you have a longer term, a longer time allowed to pay it off, you're gonna have a lower cash flow. I have a smaller cash flow payment each month. But what that says is I'm gonna make that smaller payment over a longer term and ironic, or excuse me, co coincidentally, it's gonna end up car costing you more money for that longer term loan. It is a benefit for the lower payment. It is a disadvantage for the amount of interest you are going to pay overall. So how do you pay the least amount of debt of, of all these things? Number one is very similar to investing. Avoid as many fees as you can. Is there a prepayment fee? 
Uh, is there going to be a loan origination fee? Is there going to be, if I consolidate a fee, where are those fees? That has to do with identifying which one you have specifically. And then whether it's during school or immediately after school, how do you graduate with the lowest amount? You measure out those questions we just went through with Sydney and saying, how much do I actually need to take out? That's a specific word there. Not how much do I want to take out? Why you don't walk into a car dealership and ask the person selling you a car, how much can I get a loan for? Is because they're gonna guide you to how much you can tolerate, not how much you can uh, fit into your capacity. So you measure it on outcomes of what do I see as this and then push it down to the smallest need as possible. Uh, Matthew, I thought that was a great question. Um, again, a lot of ideas here and then another avenue you can start to explore around your student loans graduating with less is going to be that pay as you go or that income based model. Those are ways that you can start to look at debt repayment going forward and how you can manage them better. But Matthew, I want to ask, did that cover or address the, the conversation you were looking for? Yes, it did. Thank you. Absolutely. Jed, I've got something to add real, real quick. Oh, sorry, Patrick. Um, I, I know we're going to be switching gears here briefly. So I, uh, I know a couple other questions that I saw came through on this, and I think it's relative to all of what what you asked, Matthew, but also what Jed's saying. You have to remember, too, it is an interesting time in our world that not only has technology in education very drastically increased and caught up, but the prices to go to school have continually increased. And so the question is, is it worth it to attend a prestigious college for the financial cost. This is a, a, a probably one of the most fundamental things to understand is that you have to know educationally, the gap has largely been driven down. You, you might have had uh, 20 years ago, a significant difference from Ivy League to your community college. The educational gap is largely decreasing. And so that is not to say that you should be looking for a, a really cheap school to go to, but there are some incredible universities, incredible different colleges that you can attend and get a high level, if not elite level education for a significantly reduced cost. And so I think that is a big part of it, not, on, not only on the loans and the fees, but start to do the research on the education and what you can get for the, for the cost. Because similar to going on to a used car lot, if you can get the same type of car for a fraction of the cost don't go to the the big marketed uh engine that's trying to drive you to something that maybe not be be built for what you're looking for and what you need I can yeah and, and I, I wanted to introduce christian into the, the conversation as well hi ram how are you good question um and he and i were doing a bit of a, a side chat i mean christian you just finished college we don't need to know your financials of, of how much debt you took on or, or how much money you're going to be making or asking for your next job. But w what are some steps that you took to try and mitigate some of that financial um, debt? And then step two, like what's your advice for Rom as he's looking at all these different college options related to what Kenny's talking about with respect to like, you don't need to go to the ultra institutions. There's a lot of different options. Yeah. So something that I learned just throughout these conversations and, I'm doing the uh, career exploration camp videos with Timmy. Like something I wish I would have done was apply for scholarships like prior to even going to college. And then like Jed said earlier, like just knowing all your different options, whether it was going to a two year universities to start off with and then transferring into a, a larger university. Um, something I did throughout college kind of mitigate some of the costs was I worked all throughout, like worked, worked like four or five different jobs throughout college to kind of um, pay for it. But um, something I also would have think that I should have done was like really just understand the loans and what you're really getting yourself into. Because a lot of times when you're going through college, it's like my process was kind of rushed and I wish I would have started earlier. 
But if I would have started early and just really understand like what the loan was was about and like understanding how it was going to get paid off and like just understanding like the breakdown of if you stay on campus, you're going to be paying more in loans or if you move off campus your second year, like all the different options that are presented to you, I wish I would have known earlier. And that's something that I would advise y'all to do is just really just sit down, understand your loans, understand all the different costs that are associated with the school, whether it's housing or, or your meal plan, all those different um, things that go into your costs. I would really just sit down and just really understand it and then break down your costs and make a, not a budget, but essentially like some type of plan to help you pay it back. Some of, some of the things I would note, you know, Lana, one of our team members, she was an RA when choosing college, which allowed her, afforded her the opportunity to have free housing and, and also a stipend. So that's a great way to offset costs. And then just one thing to know, Rom, if you can get into a great school, Harvard, like I'm not telling anyone not to go to Harvard. As someone who never could have gotten into Harvard, I'm not telling you not go to Harvard, right? But it's always a cost benefit analysis. The ultra elite institutions, they cost a lot more money, right? And if you looked at the data, people that go there make more money, right? But What's the cost of that debt you have to take on when maybe you could go to a, a good school or a local school and not have to pay that money or maybe not have to pay anything at all because something scholarship you got. Like it's a cost benefit analysis. I think it's important to know that if you guys don't go to Harvard, you're going to be OK. None of us on here have gone to Harvard. <laughs> all right. And we're doing OK. And there's a lot of people who haven't done that as well. So don't feel like it's ultra elite or, or bust. Their college, regardless of where you go, is what you make of it wrong. Uh, so, on top of that, I'll, I'll just say, sorry, Jed, I, uh, I, the last eight years, I have largely worked on hiring, recruiting, working with teams of people. I've been in the startup world in large scale organizations. And I will tell you, the, the, the number one thing that is looked for is a college education, not which. Just to be very clear, the, the, the identification of where you went to school is significantly lower on the the um, interest level than it is did you go to school did you get an education and i think that's important to understand not not that it doesn't matter it does and and there are definitely uh universities and education systems that are far better than some but don't be, don't believe the lie that is telling you you have to do these 60 70 a, a year thousand dollars a year educations just to get a entry level job, it's it's just not the not the. Tr okay, and again, because great questions are rolling in, um, let's let's pivot here and be able to address a few more of those topics as they come. Um, some some really cool ones, and uh, from Tyler, what are some fundamentals that people should always follow? Uh, one of the great features about partnering money vehicle copper and sports business it, uh, sports biz camps is going to be your introduction to the money vehicle course and curriculum. You're going to be able to take that starting as soon as possible to be able to go through those philosophies. Uh, should I start marketing and promoting my high school student athlete? This is in connection with the NCAA uh, announcement. I would say yes, not for the intention that they're gonna become an influencer or make a million dollars, but for the idea that we as professional athletes were told that we need to become businesses. Business men, we are business then a man. And so looking at going down scale, starting a high school student looking at their brand, looking at the message they're putting out, looking at all of those things is a great seed to start planting. Um, and then before I pivot to credit and investing, do you see a correlation with people who quit early in sports with quitting later in life? Yes. Losing is a habit. Winning is a habit. One of the greatest things I got to do was work next to Drew Brees for four years and see the process of what habits can do. This mindset is the difference. You tell yourself, I'm okay to quit you're going to tell yourself, I'm okay to quit again. Looking at that philosophy of money, your philosophy of sports, of school, of life, everything is a habit. If you wanna repeatedly have success, build out a habit. We talk about habits a lot. When you look at a cash management system and structure, how your paycheck comes in, I've already divided it up and have habitually decided how I'm going to use that. So do I see a correlation? Unfortunately, 
you absolutely do. But on the other lens, you absolutely see a correlation with people who have the mindset of a winner. There are a couple of questions around credit cards, when to start a credit. Chapter five in the money vehicle curriculum identifies what the credit card trap is, how to differentiate between debit and credit, and then how to use credit cards wisely. When is the best time for you to start a credit card? Yesterday. Because one of the biggest impacts on your credit score is your credit history. There are five components around your credit score. We're not going to have time to go into all of those today, but looking at credit history, you start the clock, you're immediately getting an advantage. I'm not telling you to rush out and buy or get your first random credit card. You can become an authorized user on your parents' credit cards. You can get a secured credit card, which it means it has a backing. Credit cards are unsecured loans. Secured means I have an amount of money that is backing this trust and this promise. Great introduction for high school students to start building their credit score, secured credit card. You can go on websites like bankrate.com and specifically look for secured credit cards. If you are feeling confident, you do have an income and you want to start maybe with a retail credit card, maybe with a, a, a no fee credit card, beginning that process, beginning to build the trust, beginning to manage it on your own is an excellent tool. We encourage throughout our Money Vehicle course, step number five in building a financial plan is operating your credit card wisely. So yes, you should start going to do it. Um, Cryptocurrency was also questioned in there. We'll get to that if we can. Um, high level there. Is it all it's cracked up to be? No, because the hype is building it way beyond any real expectations and values. Look at what it is. Look at what you want it to be in your plan. And then understand, anytime you are concentrated in one spot, I don't care if it's Amazon, you're at a much higher risk. So if you were looking at your financial plan and saying, I'm going all in on this thing, you're one thing away from having your plan be destroyed. Shifting to investments. I love to share this story. And then after investing, I'm gonna kick it back to Kenny to start talking about building your plan and what are some foundational tools and resources we need. But this is the last analogy. Again, this is what I love. So these questions, I wish we had four hours and can go through all of them, but, um, is there such a thing about being too young? Very similar thing I just mentioned around your credit history. There is this eighth wonder of the world called compound interest. And the biggest exponential in factor of that formula is time. In Money Vehicle, we walk you through some stories around how that plays out. But let me just explain how to begin investing as a high school student. It would be as if I asked Christian, Kenny, and Patrick, who's going to win the Super Bowl this year? We all know Patrick's a diehard Saints fan, so he's going to say, who dat? I think the Saints are going to go win the title this year. Christian says, well, the Saints are pretty good, but you know, there's some other pretty good teams in their division, in the NFC South. What if the Bucs win it again? What if the Panthers are good? What about the Falcons? Could I just bet somebody in the NFC South is going to win? Kenny, being much, much brighter than these other two, says, well, I don't know about just the NFC South. What about the entire NFC conference? Now we have 16 teams. Can I bet on that? And then I come in and I just ask the question of, what if you bet that somebody from the NFL was going to win the Super Bowl? Would you like to make that bet? This introduction to how to look at a Super Bowl winner is exactly how you will be introduced to investing. You can bet on a single company. In this entrance, in example, it was the New Orleans Saints. You chose one of the 32 teams. So I can go bet on a single company. Then Christian said, what about the NFC South? That's four teams. That's called a mutual fund. So if I get a gathering of groups, now it's companies, that is a mutual fund. Then Kenny came in and said, well, what if it was just the entire right side of the bracket, the NFC? That's 16 teams. That's taking it to an index fund. So now I'm not betting on a single person. I'm not even betting on a division. I'm betting on everybody in this conference, all 16. As a young investor, that is how you want to begin your financial 
investment process. You must, must, must today to be financially literate, to have a financial plan, you must make your money go to work for you. You must employ your dollars. That means being a saver, which is an important step, is no longer enough of financial literacy. We challenge ourselves now. Banking, half a percent, one percent in a, a, a bank account is not going to lead you to financial freedom. You must now understand this new language of money, what it means to invest. Is stocks the only one? Not at all. But it is going to be the lowest barrier of entry for you to begin this plan. When I came in and I said somebody from the NFL was going to win, that is what I would call a globally diversified index. What are some of the places you should start to look to invest? A globally diversified index, I would put as number one. That means you can own up to 9,000 different companies across the country and across the world. Or if you want to stay closer to home, Warren Buffett says if he was going to buy one thing for the rest of his life, it would be the S&P 500. There are many funds that track the S&P as an index. That means you own the 500 largest companies here in the United States. Do you own Apple? Yes. Do you own Google? Yes. Do you own Microsoft? Yes. Do you own Tesla yet? Now, yes, you do. So looking at that, I'm a high school student. I get to put the eighth wonder of the world compound interest starting to go to work for me. It is pivotal. Four years earlier, 10 years earlier is a dramatic difference down the road. Why can some walk away into freedom at 55 instead of 70? Is because they started at 18 and not 28. Looking at that, make your money go to work for you, employ it, start to bet on the NFL in a globally diversified index fund or index funds in general. That is how as a high school student, you can take ownership, begin investing, keep your risk down, but the long-term reward. We got into a couple different topics. Again, this is, as I hope you see, I challenge you, go get your certification in financial literacy, the money vehicle course. What I want to transition to though, is as we talk about actions, as we talk about steps to go take, we mentioned open a credit card. We mentioned starting to invest. If you've ever heard of something called a Roth IRA, go check it out in the course because that's going to be your 10th action and what you're going to do there. But we skipped over the foundational elements. I want to let Kenny discuss and describe exactly where copper comes into the play here because you are their target audience of who they're trying to help, who they're empowering, who they're educating, and how we're going to build a cash management system using these types of accounts. So Kenny, I want to kick it over to you. Appreciate it, Jed. Yeah, I, I will, uh, I'll, I'll give you guys just a, a quick overview. Uh, before I get into this, so many incredible questions. And I, I'm just astonished at where your level of interest is and how I wish I would have been in the place that many of you guys are just seeking and asking these questions. I think that's step one. Uh, and so what I was just doing, I, I'm, I'm gonna just pull up one little screenshot for everybody here to take a look at, but I added in uh, my email address and I don't wanna assume for Jed here, but there's so many incredible questions that uh, I'd, I'd love to, if, if available, provide some context to, uh, provide some, some insight to what's uh, being done. And, and I know we didn't get a chance to really get into a lot of this, but I will tell you, to Jed's point, uh, get in and take the Your Money Vehicle course. I've done it a couple times. At 30, mid-30s, I am learning things that I wish I would have known at your age. Uh, so powerful, and it is those cheat codes to unlocking your future. Uh, so take advantage of it. So many powerful things. And now to kind of get to that foundational piece that Jed was talking about, I love the ape approach. I love it. Uh, for many of you that are playing sports or many of you that understand sports or just we're here for sports biz camps, there's a reason that we're interested in sports, and it's because so much that is learned on the field translates off the field attitude, preparation, effort. It is the exact same thing when it comes to your financial success. It is. If you are approaching money with a bad attitude and it's heavy and it's negative, it's probably going to be a rough life for you. If you're not preparing to be successful in life, 
and you just want to be successful, but you're not doing what you need to set yourself up, it's not going to happen. Uh, and if you don't want to put intentional effort towards being successful financially, I can tell you there's no chance you're going to be successful. I, I think I could get this wrong, but I think it's over 85% of people that win the lottery go broke within three years. And it's because they don't know how to foundationally handle finances. So I'm going to try this technology and see if this works. Try and share my screen. Um, let's see here. I am hoping this works. Give me one sec. I'm going to put up a QR code and make this really simple for us. Uh, and hopefully be able to give you guys the opportunity just to select this uh, it needs to be a PDF, so I am changing this really quickly. Give me a sec here. Um, what we do, as, as I'm doing that, what we do is we focus on giving you the tool to start learning the fundamentals, setting up a bank account, setting up a savings account, starting to, to do an automatic savings transfer so you can start putting money into an account that you can then start to think about investing into your future. And so that's going to be uh, what we call the learn through doing approach. Let's not just uh, have something that, that is a concept or idea. Let's put it into practice. That's part of that effort approach. All right. Let's see if this is going to work here. Looks good, Kenny. What do you see is the question? We just see the stage and now we see your website. Okay. I'm going to try and make this big then. Okay. Uh, you've got my email address down here at the bottom. Uh, feel free if you've got any of these questions. I would love to be able to provide any, any context or learning around that. This QR code up here is very specific to being part of the, the registration here with, with uh, Sports Biz Camps. Uh, not only do we give you free access to be able to set up a bank account with a debit card that you're able to spend uh, not only on your phone digitally but in person uh, wherever you like, we also are giving you guys exclusive access to $20 just for being a part of this, this incredible program. You're going to get $3 just for signing up. You're going to get another $2 for watching a quick little video on the difference between debit and credit, some of which uh, Jed was able to address there. And then we're going to give you a $15 exclusive reward, again, just for being a part of the, the SBC organization. Uh, through this app, you're going to have access to a number of different features that hopefully are going to start setting you up for what we want you to be prepared for, which is financial freedom, financial success. So take advantage. Uh, I know we're running out of time here, so I'm going to leave this up uh, and I will make sure that we get something out to you as well. So you can you could follow up and again, have access to my contact info for any questions there. I think that's you, all I got, Patrick. Yep. Yeah, thank you, Kenny, for the support. Um, and as I mentioned in the chat, everyone, so you're going to get a post-game uh, email from today's session, and we'll have the specific link that is similar to what the QR code is. So if for some reason we weren't able to do that, that's where you need to go. So in closing, uh, can't tell you how much we appreciate the support, Kenny um, and, and Jed as well. I think as we start to like lean into relationships and the opportunity students have, I met Jed through some relationships. He, he connected with Kenny, and now this is all – Come on full circle. So that, that's the that's the beauty of relationships. So thank you again for the amazing presentation, Jed. Uh, the top 200 students will get access to the Money Vehicle course. Every student gets access to the $23. So thank you so much. Thank you, Kenny. See you guys. So now we are breaking for the Pathway Roundtable. So wave number one, you are dismissed. Um, find the, that spreadsheet that I dropped in the chat where you can find your specific table. So wave number one, please go to your tables. Wave number two, wave number three, please stay with us for a second. And we will communicate instructions. Hi, Pat. We actually have to end the session so that everyone can be released to go okay. into the social lounge. Bye, everyone. <laughs>